I um, when I met Mike, you meet Mike, and I, as I was speaking to someone earlier, um, he is a man of his word, and in the day and climate that we live in now, that's rare. That a man says something and you can hold him to it. He never misleads you. And I'm speaking as a uh, past president of Lake County NAACP. And so I would have to interface with Mike uh, on various topics and various activities and various events. And um, that's why I didn't know, because I, I didn't know what his party affiliation was, was, because he wasn't, he never operated under like a Republican umbrella or a Democrat umbrella and independent. He was just the, the attorney. He was the attorney general. That's, that's, you know, the state's attorney. That's who he was. And uh, I would call him uh, on numerous occasions. And he always came through. And if he didn't, he, he, he said, you know, I, I can't get involved in this or I can't do this. But he, most important that, when I think of Mike Nurem, I think of a man of his word. Um, anyone who's saying something negative about him, I would first honestly have to ask, do you know him? Have you ever had to work with him? Because anyone that's had to work with Mike couldn't say that. Um, so I really, it's difficult, it's, someone else asked me that, um, and who's his chairman, and I just said, I, I really can't address it that, because everyone that I know, and I, and I know the mayor of Waukegan, and I know the mayor of Zion, and the mayor of, you know, North Chicago, and the mayor of Gurney, and none of them, and the chief of police of all of those communities, and they all have very, you know, good things to say about um, I heard that there was some negative information coming from Chicago and Cook County, and I would caution people to look at the source. Do they work with Mike Nurm? Have they ever worked with Mike Nurm? Have they ever sat down to dinner at a, uh, an affair for their community? Mike Nurm buys tables for NAACP. He buys tables for the uh, county commissioners out of Waukegan. He buys tables to support uh, kids baseball leagues. So these people were saying this out of Cook County, you know, maybe you can say anything on paper, but if you ask residents who live here of all colors, all nationalities, all ethnicities, you won't hear that. So that's why I haven't heard that because I live in Lake County. I don't, I mean, they would have to tell me what they're attributing that to because I can think of too many legal cases where he was not irresponsible or negligent. I can think of too many um, children, young people who he's helped. And I mean, where I've seen him in schools uh, for um, professional career days or going to school just to talk to kids, to give them a, a sense of direction. Again, people who are saying this, uh, I don't know what, I, I honestly don't know what they're basing it on, but I can attribute to Lake County. You could come all the way through here. I don't care if you were in Waukegan to Lake Forest. Um, I don't know what they're referring that to. I really don't. I live in a community that has about 123 homes. Uh, they're all about two to five acres apart. So it's a very nice upscale community. And of the 123 homes, there are two African-Americans live here. Uh, one is a doctor uh, who lives about, you know, on the, in section three. I live in section four. My husband is a COO, retired COO of a corporation. Um, I'm an educator and administrator in Zion, Illinois, in Zion School District six. We had never had any racial problems until recently when the movement for Black Lives Matter became very prevalent as a result of different events that have occurred in this country. Uh, there is a tone here now that is very sad. Uh, the climate is sad because people out of Washington are preaching division. And unfortunately, everyone may not be as intelligent as yourself or, Dr. or Mr. Nurem, uh, and they believe it. I uh, answered the phone one night in our home, big home, 9,000 square feet. And my neighbor asked me, doctor, the gentleman who was the doctor, I'll say his name because he doesn't mind, Dr. Mensa. 
He said, did you get a flyer in your mailbox today uh, basically saying black lives don't matter, okay? And in addition to saying black lives don't matter, uh, there were several websites for people who, of that persuasion who wanted to make America great again and all white again could tune into. And they can just come in here and get all this information so they could all work together to make it better. Now, the person who sent that had to live in my community because there are two African-American homes and those two homes did not receive a flyer, okay? I, uh, my neighbor was outraged. I mean, he was just livid because he's like, I save lives, I'm a doctor, how can this happen? We've been here seven years, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I said, you know, I, I as a result of being president in WCP, I tend to be a little more calm and I've learned you have to think before you react. So I said, you know what, let me, I have a friend because I consider uh, Mr. Niram a friend and my son because he's young enough to be my son. I said, uh, let me call him tomorrow. So this was Sunday. So on Monday morning, I, I text him. And I told him what happened. And I promise you, within five minutes, he called me. And he was at work. And he said, did I read this right? You received some hate mail? And he asked me to go into detail, which I told him what I just recited to you. And he said, I I'll get back to you. At that time, he called the chief of the sheriff's department, who I also know. I don't know why I didn't call him. I just immediately thought to call Mike. And the sheriff was out of town, and he called Mike and says, I'm sending someone over there right now, and we're going get to get to the bottom of this. And they did. And it wasn't because it was me, because the sheriff uh, said that, and I think he or Mike, Mr. Norm said, we know this is going around throughout the country. Uh, we received emails that hate mail like this is going around, but we didn't know it was in Lake County, and we don't want it here. So he immediately sent a detective over um, that night, and several, several nights after that, we had a police car in front of our house, as well as Dr. Um, Minsa. And I live in a community that has private patrol. It's a private community. But Mike didn't care. He said, don't worry about it, we're gonna take care of this and we're gonna find it. And the detective who came over was very nice. He followed up and he says that people have cameras. We have cameras. And he said, they're gonna go and go through the cameras and find out who did this. I believe they did because we received some apologies and things from my neighbors who are in shock. Uh, my next door neighbor, I met with her, I asked her about it. She lives down about four you know, acres. And she said she received it, but she threw it in the wastebasket. So that's why I know whoever sent it lives here. Um, it brought the racism closer to home. I'm from Detroit. So I grew up after the riots, but I have heard about them. And I was kind of alienated from Kenosha. I, I thought it was horrible what happened to Mr. Lloyd. I thought it was very hard that someone was shot seven times. But I felt comfortable knowing that the people who represent us in Lake County, I don't believe they would, they would stand for that. I felt comfortable knowing that I live in a community where the state's attorney, the chief of the sheriff's department wouldn't stand for that. Now, can, are you gonna have isolated incidents where you get someone on your force who might react before he thinks? Yeah, you do. But I think that we have a state's attorney and sheriffs and judges here who will hear the facts and will not support that type of action. And I'm going by my personal experience and by conversations I've had with all of those individuals. And by conversations I've had with them since this has occurred, they do not support what's going on from Washington to Kenosha. They don't. It's one thing to protest, you know, um, my mother's sister uh, was the first black African-American state representative um, in Michigan. A good friend of ours is John Conyers. He was a family friend in from Detroit. And I protest, I've walked, and that's protesting. I mean, people, kids protest on college campuses. That's protesting. When you start to burn property, when you start to become destructive, that's not protesting. That's riot and violence. 
and you mute your point when you do that. These businesses that are owned privately by people, and then you have to write on your business, black owned, woman owned, child lives above it. They shouldn't have to do that because those businesses have a right. They serve your community. Number one, they serve your community. Car dealers will sell cars to the community when other dealers won't. You know, stores give you credit to buy food when other stores won't. So who, who benefits this? And I would venture to say people are coming in to burn these businesses, which is totally wrong aren't even from that community, okay? Because the community, I know my son, about two, my son's a medical student. He's a senior medical student at the University of Vermont. And he came up, he was just distraught about what happened, but he came up to Kenosha to serve. He heard that they were going to start to rebuild Kenosha and they were cleaning up the businesses. And he wore his white medical coat to clean up Kenosha. That's what you do if you want to protest, if you want to make a statement, you show how you support. No, it's not right for anybody to be shot seven times in the back. It doesn't take that. It's not right that those three other outstanding policemen could not have attacked. But it is two wrongs do not make a right. And to burn down a community, no. You muted your point. You, just, you isolated people who were going to help you, including people of color. Uh, we have to vote right now. Um, Ms. Ginsburg, uh, my son, who's the medical student, actually knows her, knew her. And uh, he's very, very, very close to Nina Totenberg. It's almost like a godmother to him, uh, who is giving him actually a scholarship to go to, law, to medical school. So the, the incident with um, Chief Justice is close to my family. I, w I was always going to vote. I have to vote. I grew up in a civil rights family where we voted. But when Ms. Ginsburg passed last Friday, and by the way, it was the day after she was woman of the century. It was Ginsburg Day, September 17th. I was breathless and I realized that I'm not only going to vote, I'm going to rally to get those to vote. I'm going to drive people to vote and I'm taking off that day to vote. I was going to mail my vote in because I'm like, you know, I'm busy, I'm the minister, everyone else. But I want my vote to count. And I am not sure, given the tone in this country, that if I mail my vote, that it's going to count. So I am taking off that day and the day before. I am going to drive a van. I have already talked to people in Waukegan to um, see what can I do. Because, you know, talk is cheap. And being president of NAACP, I, too, I knew talk is cheap. You have to get out and walk to walk. And that's another thing that Mike, you know, I hate to divert back to Michael, but he and I have walked in many parades for, you know, um, Martin Luther King's day. He's gone to those, those breakfasts. We have walked uh, for June, Juneteenth, which is an African-American day in June. And we've walked, we've walked in those. So I use that to say that you can't, can't it's not talking to talk, it's walking to walk. I intend to walk the walk to help people to register to vote. I am going to do that. So I talked to his uh, campaign manager and I told her that I am all in about calling and reminding people to vote. My son has already started doing that. So we're already putting it in motion because we, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or liberal, the current environment here is so similar to Nazism. And I, my undergraduate degree was in history. And I did a, my thesis on the um, World War II. This move that's going on, the things that are happening in this country, this is not new. It's not even original. I can't even give the person in charge credit for being authentic. This was done in 1936, 1938. It was based on hate. And we have survived since 1968, 1965 without hate. We've said it's not acceptable. Now, does that mean everybody in this country love one another? No, it doesn't. But they try to get along. And then we get someone four years ago who says, no, you don't do that anymore. Well, yeah, you do. And so I want to do what I have to do to take us back to where we should be. And that is be kind to one another, be human to one another, and support one another. It sounds like people are reading propaganda that some that someone who may be running against him has developed and submitted out in the in the community. 
But if you go in the, any community in Lake County, now I don't know if this position is like for Lake County, Oakland, I don't know, apparently it must be outside of our county as well. Uh, and you look at his record. So are they viewing his record or are they just going on, you know, controversy of someone's attitude because they have a, a hidden agenda and their agenda is to win. So, you know, when you want or you're running for an office and, and he's running for an office, you're going to pick anything negative. And it's just like when you read an article, uh, you can pick a negative line out of any paragraph, but read on and you might find something that contradicts that. So I suggest people look at his record. It speaks for itself. It really does. So this community, we go by um, the gentleman that he is and the hard work that he does. And he is a hard working man, okay? Cause I'm, I'm very hard working and I see him in everything. I'm like, and often he will bring his son. He has a small, a young son and he takes his son out into the community. So he's not afraid, you know, he takes him everywhere. And, and he is, again, I would like to close by saying the one good thing, the one thing that identifies Mike to me is that he is a man of his word. It is rare. That is, I mean, every day we get a different voice out of DC, out of Washington, a different Twitter. He doesn't twit because Mr. Nero don't have time to twit. So he's not a Twitter, okay? But you can get him in his office, but he is not a Twitter because he doesn't have time. He's a doer.